23 years after the release of their classic track Loaded, Primal Scream return with their 10th album. It's called More Light, and we came to London to speak to the band singer Bobby Gillespie. It's alright, it's okay, you can do just what you want to, take your time. Bobby, a couple of tracks on this album seem to deal with dissent and a lack of activism. In terms of things you talk about on this record, where do you think that political apathy comes from? There's a right-wing revolution happening, but nobody in the arts is commenting on it, nobody's saying anything about it. You know, it's kind of like, so, a silence collusion, you know, or, or people just uh, so tranquilised, dazzled, seduced, you know, seduced, dazzled, distracted and persuaded by the spectacle, you know, and by the spectacle I mean like the mass media. I think people have been persuaded or maybe even trained to think that politics has got nothing to do with their lives, that politics doesn't touch their lives. Have you always thought of Primal Scream as a political band? To me, it's not, it's not political where we vote for this party or that party. I think we're artists and artists stand outside. I think an artist places to stand outside and make a critique. Maybe we've got more time to think about things because other people have got to get up really early and take kids to school and go to work and I mean I do all that stuff as well but you know in my I kind of work for myself and so I, I go to my studio every day and I can think about stuff. People are going to say oh, what the fuck is he going on about you know he's doing all right for himself but it's more like just like to see a more egalitarian society. Tell me about revisiting Screamadelica and taking that album out on the road again. We had a lot of love from everybody and it made everybody more confident. And, um, but we also were kind of starting to write these songs that have appeared on More Light, so... It was kind of good to have them both projects, you know. Schemadelica was all of its time and, you know, more light is all of its time and we're older and political climate's changed and we've changed, we've got families and we've been through a lot, a lot of life, a lot more life experience than, say, that we had when we made Schemadelica. If I had the brain and experience that I've got now and the things that I know now, if I had that as a 28-year-old, I'd be having a great time. <laughs> I wouldn't have made the mistakes that I made. You know what I mean? I made a lot of mistakes. What we do now is way different from then, you know, because we have got our own studio, go to, we, we go five days a week and write songs or, you know, attempt to write songs, make music. And um, it's very creative. Just so, if we were like artists, like say, Jake and Dino's Chapman or Jim Lambie. Now they've got studios, they go to the studio five days a week. That's what we do. Tell me about David Holmes and specifically why you chose him to produce this record. Um, we've known David since the uh, mid to late 90s and we've got a great relationship with him. Uh, Andrew and myself both sang and played guitar and wrote songs or co-wrote songs on uh, David's album. Anyway, he's a great friend. There was a pub opposite Camden Market and he was DJing there. And I went to hear him play records and um, he got chatting and stuff. And um, he was saying nice things about Primal Scream. And I don't know, I just got a feeling that night that oh, maybe we should work with Holmes in the next record. Did David help you or encourage you to take a lot of risks? Well, what he did was he was really cool. He played his really cool records to create atmospheres and moods. And um, he'd have some really cool drum loops that he might have made, that he would have made, that, and uh, they were really cool rhythms. And uh, just kind of throw them down at me and Andrew and see, he would see how we, we, we reacted to them. 
And I, I tend to say that he provoked us and it writing the song. Because <laughs> it, it's kind of quite provocative the way he works. You know, when I'm working, I th I'm thinking. I think a lot and uh, I'm weighing stuff up and I'm going on instinct and I'm using my thinking about the direction it's taking and stuff. And Andrew's pretty much the same, but Holmes kind of, he likes you to be, yeah, yeah, it's great, it's great, it's great. He wants that, or it's shit, it's shit, you know. We spoke to Tracy Thorne a couple of months ago on this programme about her own memoir, and given the longevity of your career and everything that's gone on, have you ever thought about writing a book? I'm not sure about that. There's so many of these, I've read all of these rock books and they're all the same. You never really get to know how the person really feels. It's all surface stuff about, and then we made this record, and then we released this single, and then we got on top of the pops, and it's kind of like, when you've read one rock book, you've read them all, almost. You want to go a bit deeper, and I don't think any of these people go very deep. So I think if I ever did something, it would have to be kind of deep, I think. It's all right. Why do you keep on doing this? Why do you keep on making music? Because I'm trying to be a better artist. And I, I'm not satisfied. It is like rock and roll, but it's art, you know. And it's, you can marry, you can marry them both together. You know, you can marry the joy, the ecstasy, and the transcendence and the sexuality of rock and roll with conceptual art. That's reason enough at the age of 50 to still be making rock and roll. And I'm gonna keep doing it until I run out of things to say. Thank you very much. Okay. Cheers. Thank you. It's alright. It's okay.